After the death of Alexander and breakup of his empire, one of his generals who had formerly lived his life conquering civilizations now wanted to create one. Ptolemy's infusion of Greek culture into Egypt's wealth and prestige would lay the foundations for a new kind of city, one that would become the greatest and most cosmopolitan in the ancient world, Alexandria. It's the city of the world. And as such, the kings, the Ptolemaean kings of uh, the new kingdom of Egypt, created something that is completely new in the known world. It would be the towering fires of Alexandria's lighthouse that guided ships into the harbor. But it was another vision of Ptolemy's that became a beacon for the greatest minds in the world, Alexandria's museum and library. But that does not mean it was for exhibiting something. A museum at that time meant something like a research center. It's a think tank, perhaps the world's first great think tank and Ptolemy buys great scholars and writers from uh, around the Greek world. And the library is the greatest repository of books uh, in the Greek world. It had a mythical amount of scrolls, something, some say 200,000, some say 700,000. It was at the museum and library where for the first time in human history, knowledge becomes a commodity to be stored and shared. In fact, some scientific discoveries made in Alexandria over 200 years before Christ wouldn't be accepted until 1,800 years later. Pupils were taught the Earth was round, and one of the great astronomers, Eratosthenes, calculated the circumference of the Earth and was off by less than 1%. So it's perhaps a very interesting story that the Ptolemaean kings, uh, whenever a ship will come into Alexandria, uh, the first thing that uh, the captain had to do is had to declare if he had any papyri, any uh, works of philosophers or science on board. They were taken to the library to be copied, but usually they gave the captain back a copy and not the original. Although Ptolemy was a Macedonian Greek, the key to the success of his dynasty in Egypt would be in its willingness to assimilate Egyptian culture. Ptolemy's own family went to great lengths to adopt Egyptian practices as their own. Ptolemy's son, Ptolemy II, even married his own sister, Arsinoe. There had been a tradition in the Egyptian pharaonic families of brother-sister marriage because, and there was a sense that a figure like that couldn't just marry any old ordinary mortal, and that eventually only a sister who sort of shared his divine origins was an appropriate companion and spouse. The Ptolemies may have used Egyptian traditions to elevate themselves to the status of gods, but in the end, like all pharaohs before them, these kings were still mortal. Ptolemy wouldn't live to see all of his dreams of Alexandria fully realized. He died in 283 BC of natural causes, before the library and even the lighthouse were finally completed. Alexandria continued to flourish as a mecca for knowledge under its Ptolemaic rulers and produced many of the age's foremost thinkers. And it would be just after the end of their nearly 300-year reign in the first century AD that Alexandria would produce one of the most famous Greek engineers in history. His name was Hero, and his famous designs place him among the ancient world's greatest mechanical engineers. All his books are extremely detailed, very well describing all engineering procedures. But Hero himself also was good in the sense that he has an inclination in favor of arts. We must remember that in, uh, in ancient Greek, the word art was meaning also technology. Hero's engineering designs had many practical uses, including ideas for fire extinguishers, odometers, and even automatic doors. But it was Hero's experiments with steam technology that would ignite his imagination. 
The first working steam engine was built in England around 1700 AD. Over 1600 years earlier, Hero built the forerunner of the steam engine, called an Eola pile. It was a, a metal a sphere put up in such a way so that it could uh, rotate freely and had two tubes applied when filled with water and heated from below, steam developed and uh, started to turn to put the sphere into motion, thereby turning air into something very useful, something that you could control. We maintain that under other historical circumstances, these industrial revolution could possibly have taken place in Alexandria after a couple of centuries. The essence was there. The interesting thing about the steam engine of Hero is that the guy discovered steam power. Okay, so the question beckons, how comes they didn't use steam power? How comes they didn't make uh, steam engines like uh, the English did a few centuries later? And uh, the answer to that is that in Egypt, forced labor or slave labor was so cheap, you didn't need machines to do the job. So that's like an interesting idea. You can have a technology and you don't know what to do with it because there's not a real economical need for it. Hero's inventions still intrigue engineers to this day, but there might have been many more innovations from Alexandria we may never know. Scholars don't agree on when it happened, but much of the ancient world's scientific knowledge vanished into smoke and ashes when the ancient library burned to the ground. Still, Alexandria and Greek engineering were flames of innovation that lit the ancient world like a star that guides a ship across the sea. The miraculous age of Alexander may have seen empires rise and fall, but what's left in its wake is a legacy still felt in our own world today. To outsmart the raw forces of nature and to turn them into something beneficial. That's the common denominator for all Greek engineering.